So welcome. I don't know if people can hear Ray Han or not, but my name is Tom Trainer, and I'm here to present on Better Business Blogging, and this today is a blog writing workshop. So welcome, everybody. So I'm the uh, CEO of Right Mix Marketing, and I'm a social media marketing consultant and uh, teacher, and also I just recently launched a podcast on marketing for the restaurant and wine industries. So I am also, um, one of the ways that I market myself is by blogging on my own blog, rightmixmarketing.com, as well as on other blogs such as Copy Blogger and Pro Blogger and um, Famous Bloggers, etc. And my blog is featured in alltop.com as one of the top social media and uh, blogs as well as in the content marketing area. And I teach social media at San Francisco State University. So today what I'm going to go through is the approach that I use for writing some of my most popular blog posts. And even though we'll do a scaled down version, the same exact approach is how I've written uh, some very popular posts for copy blogger and pro blogger. So let's uh, let's talk about the session. So it's an interactive working session. So to get the most value out of it, even if you're blogging um, quite a bit already, uh, so whether you're a beginner uh, having not done any blogging or whether you've, you've blogged quite a bit, I recommend that you go through the process and um, either use your computer or a uh, piece of paper and outline your post as we go through it because even if you've been blogging quite a bit this is a great opportunity to opportunity to write your next blog post anyway so uh, everyone hearing me okay ready to get started Okay, so this is the process that we will follow. So first we'll understand what customers care about, pick our topic, our headline and uh, angle for the post, and in today's post we'll do a myths or mistakes post, so we'll actually document our myths or mistakes. Then we'll uh, talk about the post opening, closing and call to action and why that's so important. And then, of course, the picture. So let's start with what customers care about. And again, this is an interactive session, so feel free to uh, type out your answers and I'll, I'll be asking you for your input as well. So let's talk about what customers care about. Let me just make one adjustment here. Okay, so if you, now one thing is that blogging doesn't necessarily have to be an online marketer doing blogging. If you have a brick and mortar business, if you offer services, consulting, or other services, you can get a lot of value out of blogging. So one of my clients is a wedding photographer. So what do you think a wedding photographer's customers worry about? So if you can type into the chat room. What are some of the ideas? Um, what are some of the things that their customers are most concerned about? And Rayhan, can you see the chat? Is it moving at all? I actually just put something in there. I didn't see it pop out. Maybe I'll have to refresh. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving, um, but feel free to type your answers in the chat room. So some of the things that a wedding photographer's customers care about are, you know, getting the shots that are the envy of their friends, that the wedding photographer is reliable, uh, won't be late, that the photos will be something unique, that the price will be right, and that the uh, pictures will make the uh, the couple look amazing. 
So similarly, an architect, what, what would an architect's um, customers most worry about? So feel free to type that in the chat room. And Rayhan, are you seeing the chat move at all? Hey, Rayhan, can you hear me? Okay, so I will continue to go. Um, an architect's customers most worry about things such as, can I re afford my remodel? How do I avoid having a disaster? As we know, some remodels turn into complete disasters. How do I find a reliable contractor? Do I need an architect or just a contractor? Can I finish by a certain deadline? So these are the kinds of things that an architect's customers worry about. So for your customers, what I want you to do is start to think about what are the main things that they worry about. That This is actually the, the core and the most important part of your blog post because you, if you really get into the minds of the customers, you can actually write a really effective post that, that really strikes a chord with them. So here's what I think about what, what my customers worry about is how to create blog content, how to understand how to do SEO, how to get leads from a website, how to deal with social media, how to build a mailing list. So when I write my posts, I'm trying to get in their heads before I decide what to write. So what I'd like you to do now is take a, a minute or so and write out some of the things that your customers really care about. What are the things that they worry about? What are they fixated on? What are their biggest hurdles? What are their biggest frustrations? Or where do they typically cause problems for, for themselves? So when you talk with them, where are they typically their own worst enemy? So if you can document three to five things now that your customers care about, feel free to type in the chat what you think your customers most care about. Now I'm going to test the chat here. I had some problems with chat earlier, so I just want to see if it's working. And Rayhan, can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to keep going. So I hope you've documented uh, three to five things that your customers really care about because this will be the beginning of your post. So once we have that, we actually want to narrow down to the exact topic that we'll be writing on. So, for example, for an online marketing consultant, we talked about these things. So for my post, I'm going to write about creating blog content. So what I want you to do is pick which area you'll be writing about today. So if you can do that now. So which of those concerns are you going to focus on? I'm just testing chat for a second here. Okay. So next is your headline and angle. So what this is, is basically taking that topic and then creating an uh, interesting working headline for it. So for example, I'm talking about blogging in my blog post, so, but for your post, you know, what are you going to talk about? So here are some options for my blogging posts. I could, I could talk about small business blogging myths. I could talk about um, blogging mistakes small businesses make. 
I could talk about reasons your small business blog isn't getting visitors. And uh, the one that I will choose is six small business blogging myths debunked. So let me see if I can see the chat on this computer. Let's see. No, I can't see the chat on this computer. So for some reason I can't see the chat, but I'd love to see your ideas. Um, but basically, so choose an angle. And again, this is a working headline. So what I usually do is if I'm talking about a list post, um, in this case, so we're talking about a list post, which, which is myths or mistakes, I would choose a number like six or seven and then once I write out the post, I might adjust that, and I might also adjust the angle a little bit. But start with a working headline, and that will help you move forward. So I hope everyone has a working headline. And uh, so that, once you have your working headline, then we can move forward to the next parts of the post. So with the, um, the next step now is to actually list out our myths and mistakes. So what are the biggest issues um, within that topic area that our customers face? So for example, the ones that I brainstorm for my post, and again, you can brainstorm, you can do research, you can actually um, look out at what other people have written to see what... Um, what ideas they have, but also you may want to look at what ideas you think they've missed. You can think back to old customer uh, conversations that you've had. So here are the myths that I have is that you have to write all the time if you're blogging, that traffic is the most important measure of success, that you have to be a great writer to blog, and I won't read them all, but these are the myths that I brainstormed. So what I'd like you to do now is to think about for your customer set, what are the typical mistakes that your customers make? What are the common misperceptions? What wrong advice do the customers often hear? And what myths are perpetuated in your, in your industry? So take a minute now and brainstorm your three to five myths or mistakes. So just to recap, you should have picked kind of your topic area, which is a big problem that your customers have, and a working headline angle, and now we're brainstorming three to five myths or mistakes. So why don't you do that now? And Rayhan, can you hear me? Okay, so I hope everyone has brainstormed at least a couple of myths or mistakes. So this will be the kind of meat of your post. So um, after we have those myths or mistakes, we then want to write our opening. So an opening is what draws the people into your post. So Obviously, a good headline and then next a good opening will be what drives people to your post. So, some examples are, you know, a short and sweet one such as um, referencing an, a survey that you saw or an, or an article that you read. Or you can talk about why this is such an important topic for them. So, for example, home remodels are probably one of the most important, you know, things that you do in, in your, um, you know, financially, uh, in your adult life. Or you could tell a story. Uh, you know, I like to do this. Is like the other day I met with a new client and and she was asking me about such and such, or she had this mis misperception. That's a great way to start a post. Or you can put yourself in their shoes. So this is what the one that I use for copy blogger. Um, something like this is you've worked hard on your blog post, you've poured your heart and soul into it, etc, etc, but something's bothering you and basically you kind of set up a little dramatic tension. So 
So I want everyone to take a minute and write up your first sentence. So we should have the topic we're writing about, your headline, some myths or mistakes for your blog post. Now I want you to think about how you will open this post. So what are you going to um, start out with? Okay, so, so take a minute and jot down your, uh, your concept for the opening. Okay, now after we have that, we then want to focus on the closing and call to action. And a lot of people take this pretty lightly, which is where a lot of blog posts kind of fall flat. But really, your blog post is designed to draw people to a specific action that you would like them to take. So you, you're trying to trigger something, and if your closing and call to action are not effective, you will not trigger the action that you uh, you would like. Or if you're just writing to write, you're basically kind of writing aimlessly. So with the closing, you want to wrap up the post in a, as well as you started it and, and, and just as well as you wrote up your myths and mistakes, you want to end it on a good note uh, and take some time writing your closing. So I say don't limp into the finish line. And then you, within the closing, you want to have a call to action. And you don't want to try to have too many calls to action. So in other words, you don't want to say, follow me on Facebook, sign up for my mailing list, uh, you know, go out and take action on what I just described. You don't want to try to have them do too many things. And you want to be explicit. You want to make it easy for them, such as, uh, you know, to get my free report, click here. So some examples of calls to action are sign up for a free report or webinar, request a free consultation, subscribe to my mailing list, follow us on Twitter, and Rayhan, can you hear me? So do you have a call to action plan? So right now what I'd like you to do is write down what call to action, what action are you wanting them to take after they read your post? Okay, so everyone, everyone take, uh, take note of that. Okay, so we should now have a blog post outlined. So basically, with the information you have, you can basically write up your blog post and maybe it requires a little bit more research or a little bit more thinking, but you should have the outline for a good blog post. But let's not forget the visuals. So visuals are important because they can get attention, breaks up the monotony of a blog that just has a lot of words. It adds life and color to your post. It helps you tell your story. And it's required for people to share on Pinterest, it's also what shows up in Facebook if someone shares your post uh, and other places like LinkedIn. So really a picture is pretty important. So don't skip the picture and don't get, um, make sure you get a good picture. So what kind of picture can you add to this post to give it a little bit of interest? So think about that. And some places that I get pictures include iStockphoto.com, Flotalia.com or even creativecommons.org, you can get pictures that people allow you to share with certain licensing uh, for even for business blogs as long as you give the uh, photographer credit. So here's an example of the post that I wrote following this process and again this is very similar to the post that I've written for a copy blogger or pro blogger or others so you know, take this process to heart. But here is the headline. Here are the myths. And again, when I write my list posts, I make the each each list item very bold so it stands out because you have to design your posts for skimmers. 
So a lot of people will skim your post and then they'll share it or they'll skim your post and then they'll come back and read the rest. So if they can't figure out where the separation points are, then they, they, they probably won't read the post. Here's my opening. So I talked about how small businesses are daunted by the idea of writing for their blog. Here's the picture. This one came from iStock Photo. And then here is the call to action. So this blog, this post about blogging leads directly to a blogging webinar um, call to action there. So, you know, and very bold. So some tips are, you know, keep it simple at first, just to do a short post based on this process, and then you can get more and more complex. Tell it like it is. You know, one piece of advice that I think a lot of people don't think about is, is definitely look at other blogs for ideas, both topic ideas as well as writing style. Everybody to practice makes better, and uh, sometimes to write I picture the person that I'm specifically speaking to. Or I recall a conversation I've had, again, like uh, talking with clients. So I have a blog post ideas toolkit that you're welcome to get. It's at rightmixmarketing.com forward slash ideas. And I actually have quite a bit in here. I have blog post ideas. Uh, I think it's over 140 different, different blog posts, basically, formulas that you can borrow. And then I also have about 15 places that you can find new blog post ideas. And then I have a, uh, an article in here about how to stand out from the crowd with your blogging. So definitely pick that up at writemixmarketing.com forward slash ideas. And that's it for the formal presentation. And then uh, here's um, some information about me and also about the, uh, the Small Business Center. And then we can take questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can connect with Rayhan to uh, to get to the questions. I, I enjoyed being here, and uh, you know normally it's a pretty interactive session, but uh, so I'd love to see your questions. And definitely give this a try, and let me know uh, if you have any roadblocks with it or hurdles, or um, or let me know how it worked for you. And go ahead and grab the rightmixmarketing.com forward slash ideas. Go ahead and grab the blog post ideas toolkit over there. All right. Thanks, Rayhan. Bye-bye.